Hi folks, broadcasting from a different room in the Badger Cave. Many thanks to Mr. Wolf for the t-shirt. It arrived safely. So, it's that time of year again, where we dig into the calcified shell of Mother Earth and excavate the most frightening specimens of humanity ever to walk the public gauntlet. What's the scariest form a human being can take? Is it this? Is it this? Oh, oh my god, bro. These niggas are fucking real, bro. Holy- Yo! Oh my god! Is it this? <laughs> Perhaps. I mean, I've seen some pretty scary people, but the scariest of all are the people who only remember what they feel like remembering. Regardless of how much evidence is piled up in front of them. Because at that point, you have a robber baron with the conscience of a moral busybody. There's nothing scarier than someone who can do that at any given time with any given issue. But today, we're going to look at one particular issue. Before we look into the eyes of eternal merciless madness, check out the Joker who's about to pass by on the left. Because if adults want to do that themselves, I don't have a problem with it. But to do that to babies, to do that to children, is not right. If adults want to do that themselves, I don't have a problem with it. But to But to do that to babies, to do that to children, is not right. Because it's an important body part, you're cutting away uh, nerve endings, blood vessels, you're stripping away fu important functions, and it's just, it's not a trivial surgery, it's a serious, serious surgery that can kill them. Now look very closely into the eyes of the one on the right. She's accessing each corner of her memory, thinking, how do I justify killing babies again? That also ha often has a lot of complications, and it's just, there's... You're not going to find any answers in your ear, my darling. But, but carry on, just pick apart everything he says, one sentence at a time. That's a good strategy. If you can't, for the life of you, remember why mutilating babies and frequently killing them is a good thing. It's hard to say because there's no, the government isn't tracking the complications, the medical industry isn't tracking the complications, because intact, because people like me have gone into the data, have tried to extract some kind of uh, statistic, and it's, we think it's somewhere between 2 and 5%. If you ask me, the amount of medical complications resulting from genital mutilation operations is damn near 100%. Losing a fully functioning body part is itself a medical complication. When you go in for surgery, perhaps for a malfunctioning body part, and you instead get a functioning body part amputated, we typically chalk that up to the surgeon making a huge mistake and usually apologizing for it. But not in this case. After all, why should these young ladies care about an operation that will never affect them or their daughters? Now watch her face. She's really struggling. She knows she prefers cut dicks when she's raping them with her mouth. And that's the only excuse she can think of. But she knows she sounds like a straight up sadist if she said, I want baby dicks cut because adult forsigans grossed me out. So she's desperately trying to think of a reason that sounds virtuous. And <laughs> it's not coming to her. Of, of serious complications. But if you think about it, of, out of millions of people, that's a lot of, that's a lot of people. I'm surprised you haven't broken out the Islam bomb. What about the women in the Middle East? Why don't you care about them? They all have to walk around with the clitoris removed and their vaginas sewn shut, whereas men in the Middle East are free to do whatever they like with their fully intact genitals without consequence. Why do you hate women? Having their most, their sensitive organs. can actually prevent prevents HIV. It has no. like a huge percentage of prevention of HIV. So, we're medical, we're medical okay. Oh yay, your friend saved you. That's almost turning into a satisfied grin now. Case closed. Gentle mutilation prevents HIV. Except when it's done to girls. For that express reason, 
by mad religious zealots in Africa. It only prevents male HIV. Female HIV is a completely different disease. Okay, well, let me ask you something. Let me ask you something now. Yes, hello, lady of Middle Eastern descent. Mysteriously tucked in on the right there. Have you had your genitals mutilated? No? Do you have to wear a burqa? No? Uh, do, do you have to stay isolated from any communication with the outside world? What? No? You, you what? You, you shit posting on Twitter every day <laughs> about how oppressed you are. Well, that's certainly a relief. But you're pretty sure shit like that happens to women somewhere around here. Okay. Oh, look, another picture of some burkas. Well, I'm convinced by that and your obnoxious commentary on it. I'm glad you get to say inflammatory things on Twitter without being arrested. So do I. So far. Fingers crossed, eh? Still got all your fingers? Lucky you. If you're circumcised, do you still have to wear a condom? They didn't miss a beat. Did you see that? All three of them. Even the bimbo at the back who hasn't said anything yet. They didn't even spend the few seconds cranking the information over in their heads thinking, Wait, is this a gotcha? Does this completely fuck up our argument about mutilation being necessary? Doesn't matter. The question was, do men have to obey your rules? Yes! <laughs> to even contemplate saying no to that question is unconscionable blasphemy. Self-contradiction be damned. You will be excommunicated from the sisterhood if you allow men to have their own natural skin. And you will also be excommunicated if you allow men not to wear the government-regulated rubber skin in its place. Okay, you still have to work on We agree on that. So then why would you tell somebody to cut off one of the most sensitive parts of their body if they're going to have to wear a condom anyways? Are you, are you talking about, now are you talking all infections or just sexually transmitted infections? Dude, <laughs> uh, sexual infections? Well, no, that doesn't make any sense. Oh, well, in that case, all infections. You're remembering things in a rather strange order, aren't you? Starting with the false things and then moving on to the other false things. All infections. Unlike all the other parts of the skin, which have evolved specifically to prevent as many infections as possible, the foreskin is the one part of the human epidermis which in fact facilitates as many infections as possible. That is an extraordinary claim, don't you think? No, you have to, you, okay, you have to distinguish because UTIs are way less common in men than in girls. And girls, that's why, that's what, no, no, that's. Oh, so when you said all infections, you meant infections except urinary tract infections. Have you already forgotten which body part we're talking about? You have, haven't you? Now that you've found out that women get those kinds of infections more than men do, suddenly those infections don't count as a good reason to cut shit off. It, it keeps happening. You hear about men being victimised by the law and it's, Oop, we won't be needing these short-term memories anymore. Let's make remorseless dickheads of ourselves. Well, a lot of people... That's, that's, well, that's one of the, the excuses people try to use to circumcise. That's one of the most common circumcise, uh, excuses given today, is UTIs. A lot of people... A lot of... What's that? A lot of circumcision is religious. That's why I was wondering if this was a religious... If you are not religious, then why do you consider religion to be a viable excuse for torturing babies and frequently killing them? Yet, wishing each other a Merry Christmas? Hell no, that's inappropriate! But mutilating babies' genitals? Eh, it's religion, they can do what they like. And if you are religious, then might you explain to me how and why God managed to get the design of the human penis so tragically wrong that you have to intervene with his otherwise infallible handiwork and play him. Okay, well, as a medical student, what, what do you care about religious uh, rituals? Is it, we don't. You have to respect Okay, and if your patient screams like the torture victim he is, will you respect his wishes and not do the thing that's making him scream like that? Uh, your patient? Who is your patient? Is is the person you're operating? Under eighteen does not have that baby is still your patient though. They're Alrighty, so if a parent wants their newborn baby to have clitoral piercings and tattooed eyeballs, that's fine. No, 
because of this thing called the Hippocratic Oath. Do no harm. But it appears the Hippocratic Oath has been amended. It is now do no harm to girls. But you can amputate a boy's skin with no anaesthetic while he screams for his life as long as the parents say it's okay when you recommend it to them as a medical professional. And of course, if you really need to replenish your stocks of baby foreskin so the ladies of HuffPo can rub it into their faces and feel good about themselves. The link I'm now showing you is actually the scariest thing you'll ever see. Proceed with caution. Yes, they're a leak garden and they're, and they're charged with making the right decision for their ch child. Cutting off part of their penis is not the right decision. Uh, you're talking to one, and yeah, I have a lot of- OH! MY FUCKING GOD! Oh, when a woman says she was raped by a man she's never met, you have to listen and believe. But when a man says, I am unhappy with my genital mutilation, it's- But WHY THOUGH ARE YOU FUCKING SERIOUS? Because it, you're taking away a lot of important functions. You're ta- What? I don't know how you do this, dude. I am in awe of your patience. This is a medical student he's talking to. Listen to it. What is the function that you're talking about? In Britain, right, lube isn't, isn't really a thing. I mean, it's a thing, but it's not typically considered necessary for sexual activity. I used to find it strange that Americans always talk about using lube, and not just to have sex, but to masturbate. I, I used to think, what is it with Americans and lube? Are they just decadent and indulgent? What's wrong with them? But you've probably already guessed what's going on there. British men usually don't need lube because most British men are already and ongoingly lubricated due to the effects of having a foreskin. But American men often require artificial lubrication because more than half of them have an exposed and unprotected glands, which in many cases experiences pain and discomfort during sex or masturbation. I did not even need to be a medical student to figure this out. One need only put two and two together and not come up with five. But if a single example of purely deductive reasoning doesn't do it for you, this chap has done his homework above and beyond. Okay, you're talking about being medical students. Now, you're, now I'm feeling worried because the foreskin has a lot of functions. Okay, it's... What is the glands? Okay, it's... Yes, she really did say that. Medical students. She doesn't know what a glands is, but she's absolutely positive that it should be skinned alive in infancy. What's that? The glands is the head of the penis. But that, not not that, just a little bit more, that, a lot more. I need to take a moment here. And you'll, you'll probably do too. Sure, people like you will rip the skin off a baby's glands without knowing what they're doing or even what a glands is, but you must be doing it for a good reason. It's the law, after all, and the law never gets anything wrong. Nature, on the other hand, I mean, the foreskin evolved over millions of years, but that doesn't mean it evolved for a beneficial reason. Nature simply made a useless flap of skin by mistake. And it's a mistake that's being fixed by unbelievably thick cunts like you. I'm going to kill myself. I'm actually going to kill it. It'll be easier this way. I'm doing it. Say that again? But I feel like if it had all these important functions, then people would want to cut it away. You would think that, wouldn't you? You would think that if the foreskin is actually uh, valuable and sensitive. You are a god, sir. You are the god of patience. You are the Olympian deity of not viciously kicking people to death when they absolutely deserve it. You, you've inspired me not to kill myself. Thank you. Uh, that was a close one. What did I tell you about short-term memory? It's, nothing matters. This is the only thing you can say. It was refuted two fucking minutes ago, but who cares? 
Males can't possibly have any problems, so shroop, bye-bye higher and mid brain functions. We're operating in Alzheimer's goldfish mode until this fucker toes the line and shuts up about Islam. I mean circumcision. How to reform Islam. Give women all the rights they can possibly have and keep men's rights exactly where they are because men obviously have all the rights already. It worked wonders for the West. Look around you. I haven't met a single person in the West who isn't thrilled about how things are going right now. <laughs> There's so much data. Uh, like what? Like all that data your friend is holding in her hand right now. <laughs> all she can do is stare at it. Like it's a baboon's ass sticking out of a Malkovich hole. Babies aren't sexually active. <laughs> yes, cancer. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. How funny. Okay, well, it wouldn't, when, when, no, no. Okay, okay, now you're talking about cancer. Why did it anger you to have circumcision? Here we go again. He already gave you the answer to that question. Because I found out what was taken from me, and... He already gave you the answer to that question. You are holding it in your fucking hands! All the things on that list... What does this mean to you, though? Like, it's just, it's just bland. It's just vessel, you know? This is way beyond stupidity, folks. Please, can you think of any situation in which it's just a glance, it's just vessels, is anything short of a sociopathic thing to say? Even if the person saying it has any idea what a glance is. If there's anyone out there who's teaching students in a medical capacity, please, for the love of God, do not admit people like this into your facility. Shit like this should be grounds to fail someone instantaneously, ban them from pursuing a medical career anywhere ever again, and give them a restraining order to stay at least 20 feet away from any living creature. This is some Jack the Ripper shit! That, those are 16 different functions. Just... That's a lot of... Okay, who the fuck is this? And do you see what I mean by the eyes? Um, I'm just curious. I'm in medical school as well. They're not drunk, in case anyone's wondering. Those are not the eyes of drunk people. They're, they're not blinking, they're not jittering, they're not staggering. They might be on speed or ecstasy. I've seen that kind of emotional vacancy in people's eyes before, and I've seen it in crowds at nightclubs and festivals. Jack the Ripper over there could be on anything. I think she's just a brainless cunt monster, whatever she's on. But this one, you can already tell, is not drunk. She strolled right over and stared at him like a fucking tawny eye. If anything, she's supercharged right now. Let's see if she's any less evil than the others. Why, um, why, we, why are you voting to restrict circumcision in general? Because it's harmful and it's unnecessary Isn't and it's dangerous. A choice, though? No, 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 no. You are talking to someone who was mutilated as a baby, and the first thing you can think of saying is, you must have chosen it! Well, gee whiz, you wouldn't be blaming the fucking victim, would you? For the the person, the only choice it should be is the person whose body it is. The person. No, it isn't. Oh, the bimbo at the back finally found her voice. It's a traumatizing operation. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's really traumatizing. That's why we should do it to babies. Babies might, you know, scream and shake and shiver exactly like a trauma victim and have heightened levels of cortisol for six months after the operation, exactly like a trauma victim, but hey, I didn't hear a no, so fuck them! No, I don't. You don't think it's unsanitary? Uh, what's unsanitary? The blood? The scars? The male tears? Or do you mean the cunt flaps? Uh, are you saying those excess cunt flaps that women have are unsanitary? Are you saying the clitoris is unsanitary? I mean, it literally doesn't have any bodily function other than pleasure. So why not just cut it off? What are you missing other than a little bit of extra sexual pleasure? I think you best check your entitlement at the door. Little miss, I want better sex, so I'm sticking with my acid-spitting predator mouth of a clam pie. Go ahead and let your parents trim your cunt flaps when you're born. Just in case you get cancer of the cunt flaps. I mean, it should be your parents' decision after all. It doesn't matter if it's unsanitary. It, it... 
Oh my god, you're fucking baffled, aren't you? What does he mean, it doesn't matter if it's unsanitary? Well, I don't want to suck a cheesy dick. Why is he being so selfish? Otherwise known as the Yiannopoulos defense. Still hilarious. Bravo. You'd have to, there'd have to be something. Hey, you, uh, I want to go back to my What's up? What's up? Of course you want to go back to your question. No matter how many times your bullshit is refuted, you just want to go round and round like a whirling dervish on a strychnine overdose. It's not even about mutilating babies anymore. That's, that's in the bag. That's definitely going to keep happening. Now you've moved on to simply bullying this man. This man whose right to his body was stripped away from him at birth. You're going to keep pounding at him with this, why does it even matter? It doesn't even occur to you that this is a sick question to ask anyone. Like, if your right to decide your own body's fate was actually taken away from you, like you probably think is going to happen but never does, if someone actually somehow forced you to get pregnant and stay pregnant, and all they said in response to your objections was, why does it even matter to you? You'd call that what it is, right? Wait, you'd call it oppression. You'd call it sexist, institutional domination of one sex over the other. But when it's this way around, now, nah, hello window, goodbye solid ground. This is not just hypocrisy. This is not just tribal bigotry. This is sociopathy. What is, what is, what is, what is, what is, no, 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 can, you, can, you said cancer. The American Cancer Society has said stop using that as an excuse to, cir to circumcise because it's inappropriate. Yeah, well, that doesn't count. These are medical students. They know what they're talking about. And, you know, that, that other doctor somewhere that I'm sure someone can think of, they say it's all right. And you know, the ladies of HuffPo love it. it. Makes their skin feel like a halo. So go fuck yourself, American Cancer Society. If we say it prevents cancer, it prevents cancer. And a fucking a virgin will cure your AIDS. What? We're not monsters, you are. You're obviously all misogynists. Yep, good point. I was thinking of making that, uh, but I thought I'd go with the cunt flaps. <laughs> Rhetorical effect. Thanks for being on, well, a different part of the same page as me, original uploader. And if you're also the guy doing the filming and the talking, then by God, thank you. Thank you for being the Hercules of not beating a bit to a bloody pulp with a piece of your shoe that you bit off in a murderous rage. You should look that up. But American we Cancer Society that has said that. Certified, board certified medical that it prevents cancer? <laughs> oh, you're board certified medical school. Fucking hell. Well, they neglected to teach your friend what a fucking glans is. Let alone the 16 things on that data card he gave her. And they neglected to teach you not to be a balls to the wall, baby torturing maniac. Show me where. No, where did. No, okay, I want to know now who told you that. Because the American Cancer Society has said stop saying that. It puts you at a higher risk of infection, it does. Do you have any idea how many things are allegedly said to increase the risk of cancer? At this point, we're on every molecule known to man either allegedly increases or allegedly decreases the risk of cancer. And not a damn one of them is confirmed except the aggressively radioactive ones. Like, bananas and Brazil nuts are very mildly radioactive. There is about as much evidence that bananas increase the risk of cancer as there is that foreskins do. Are you going to keep your child away from bananas? No, but you're going to keep him away from his own skin. D because you prefer sucking them without the skin on. Again, nice one, Milo. This is the company you're keeping. Except you're at least honest about it. Even if that was true. It's clinically proven. As we just covered, cutting breast tissue away is clinically proven to significantly reduce the risk of breast cancer. But you can see what the problem is with cutting it off when a child is eight days old. Neither of us is telling you this in person, but something tells me it doesn't matter what he says to you in person, or what I say to you in a video response, or what any nationwide medical society tells you over and over again. It will slip down your fucking memory hole because you want babies mutilated. Because you are sick, shameless baby butchers! Okay, let's, for the sake of argument, let's say that's true. 
Let's say it's true. Okay, even if that's true, you can't use that as an excuse to prophylactically amputate important okay, tissue. Okay, but my, my question is, what important tissue... Important. Okay, screen cap this. Just look at this. Perhaps I'm only telling myself that she's on some kind of amphetamine so I can justify in my own head why she's not in her right mind and doesn't deserve to be headbutted violently until she turns inside out. But holy fucking shit, dude. At this point, I'm pretty sure she is mocking you. She's mocking you for being genital mutilated. She's mocking you for being upset at your genital mutilation. If, if she saw someone who had their ear cut off, would she go, important tissue? For what? For hearing? This is absurd. You don't even need to hear that well. You're just a man. So that's what's going on in the head, dude. Pretty sure. But for hearing, read sexuality. Your sexual pleasure is simply not important. If her sexual pleasure is gratified ever so slightly by not having to look at a foreskin, then your sexual pleasure will be amputated at birth, never to return to normal. Because you see, we live in a patriarchy where men have all the sexual power and society just hates women. Just hates us. Absolutely. My question to you is why are your like your hand cells important to you? What does those, that mean to you? Those are a component of the immune system. Oh shit, he knows what Langerin cells are. You called his bluff and you're struck out. You were expecting him to say, Duh, I don't know what Langerin cells are. I just pass out the cards. But oh crap sticks. He knows what he's talking about. And he's right. They are immune cells that prevent infection. They are also found in your vaginas, young ladies. And your mouths and also your lymph nodes. Now how the fuck are you going to wriggle out of this one? Those are the cells that track down HIV cells and kill them. Surprise, surprise. No, no they're not. No, 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 no. You don't know what Langerhans cells are. You only know that you're supposed to. <laughs> you're supposed to know more than this man about anatomy. Therefore, you must do. Therefore, you have authority over him. Even though you just demonstrated that you are embarrassingly ignorant. No matter how wrong you prove yourself to be, reality does not matter because you want babies mutilated. You know, you know all that? Look up laying your hand cells when you get home. <laughs> We're right back on the ad hominem. You are the most dangerously arrogant people I've ever fucking heard. And I mean dangerously. Every time you try to catch him out with facts, he fucking wrecks you with facts. He makes you look like the morons you are, so you go right back to why do you care? You obviously had a bad experience and it's clouding your judgment. Even though you've got everything right and we've got everything wrong, this must be because you're not thinking straight. How can you possibly be thinking straight if you don't want babies mutilated? Yeah, I had an important part of my body cut off. Oh, you know! You know that! You know it's important, do you? Then why don't you argue with Psycho Eyes over there? She thinks it's not important! But you didn't always know that. Yeah. Have you always been upset with this? Or? No, I didn't. I didn't start becoming upset until about two years ago. Why? What happened? When I started finding out what was that really done to me. But what happened? What do you mean you found out you were raped in your sleep once? What? So okay. So what happened? Did something happen that made you care that you were raped in your sleep once? Why do you care? Yeah, I mean, I found did out. Did something happen? Like, I mean, did, like an infection or did something go wrong with the no. procedure that happened? Should okay, they, like, define wrong. Define about, wrong. Like, the the point of the procedure. Like, what, like, kind of made you what kind of wrong? Hey, come on, why don't you just go back to the way you felt before you found out you were raped in your sleep? It's because obviously you're being needlessly upset about it. It shouldn't matter to you that you were raped in your sleep because. Because we're medical students! And if raping you in your sleep was bad for you, then people wouldn't do it! What? What's the problem? Finding out what was taken from me, and finding out that this is still happening, even though it's a human rights violation. Every baby's born with an 
Medical student. Fucking medical student! And none of her friends are, are laughing at her, let alone correcting her for the fucking boneheaded thing she just said. You had your umbilical cord removed, so why not get your dick removed? Sorry, not dick foreskin. Was that a false equivalency? There's no room to fucking. Ugh. Umbilical cord should not be compared to foreskin. Foreskin is a part of the penis that has evolved over billions of years to have specific functions, sexual functions. You are still holding the fucking card he gave you. How? Are you just trolling him? Please tell me you're just trolling him. I mean, this is definitely where trolling becomes bullying and it's not okay. But, but I would still much rather believe that you're doing this entirely on purpose than, than you really are this chaotically ignorant. Chaotically ignorant for the sake of mutilating babies. Protective functions. Are you, do you, are you back in those areas because of your I was, I was circumcised when I was four days old, so how would I know the difference? Well, that's why I'm asking. I, I obviously I don't know the difference because I never got to experience my whole body. Absolutely, it's traumatizing. Do you remember being raped in your sleep? No? Then how the fuck could you possibly be traumatized by it? You know, I was hesitant to say that because I'm fucking positive that you will use this opportunity to forget the context in which I'm saying it and to forget all the stupid shit you said leading up to it so that you, all you have to remember is me being a rape apologist. When the truth is, you are baby mutilation apologists. Radical, fundamentalist baby mutilation apologists. And by apologist, I don't mean the sand feminist definition of an Islam apologist, i.e. someone who claims Islam is twice as bad as they think it is. I mean you apologize for it by convincing yourselves and trying to convince everyone else that it is perfectly okay and everyone should do it. In, the, in this sense, there is scarcely such a thing as a rape apologist. Un unless the people you're raping are prison punks or bachabasi. In which case, there are all kinds of sanctioned excuses for it. And if you've ever found yourself claiming males don't have to deal with sex slavery in Islam, and then you have the gall to call anyone else an Islam apologist, you might want to check your fucking head, you ridiculous twat. You, you know, there, there very, very probably are places in the Islamic world where women will also be told shit like this about their genitals. <laughs> Maybe in like deepest, darkest, bumfuck Sudan, girls will also hear, it's just a flap of skin, it serves no purpose, it's unsanitary and catches infections, and if you don't like it, you're obviously just being irrational because you found out about it one day. But you know what? I don't think they hear it from medical students. I think they only hear it from their female relatives. The ones who held them down and did the cutting. If you're a circumcised man, you'll also very likely hear it from your own family, but you'll also hear it from pathologically amoral thugs who get to call themselves medical students. No matter what country you happen to be in. But yeah, save the women, because this also happens to them in some yet unbombed lawless backward villages in the fucking desert. Legend. Define, define memory. <laughs> Mate, they can't define memory. They have completely lost the use of it. Do babies... Do babies... Do babies remember anything? No, babies don't remember anything at all. So why not just rape them, right? No, they don't. So you are self-inflicting on yourself. And if at any point they do remember being raped, then it's their own fault for self inflict Holy fuck shit. This woman belongs in a fucking loony facility. I'm not even shitting you anymore. If you think we live in a victim-blaming culture and you want to do something about it, then find this woman. Put, put her in a fucking straitjacket and poke her with sticks until you find out what went wrong. What goes on in the mind of a dangerous sociopath, okay? Put your money where your mouth is and do something. There are people like this all over the world.
And they are allowed to roam the streets. They are allowed to have children. They are allowed to get medical credentials. This is an emergency. What babies remember is pain. They remember fear. They can't form... They can't... They can't form... No. And if that doesn't make it okay to rape them, then why does it make it okay to cut off parts of their body? I, I can't do this anymore. Actually, I can. I, I'm re we're really close to the end, so I think I can. But Jesus, I can't believe I can do this. It's not true. They can't. Babies can't form. Babies can't form. The fuck are you smiling at? Bimbo at the back. The Jesus fuck are you smiling at? Form conscious me memories. That's true. But when, if you subject them to severe pain and trauma, that that will leave a mark on their on them. Absolutely, it leaves a mark. This woman could be a parent one day. This woman might already be a parent. And she is incredulously befuddled by the very idea that newborn babies are somehow psychologically fragile. They can't, just because they haven't formed a conscious memory of it. And that's proven. There's proof that for six months after circumcision, babies have a higher response to pain. Babies who are circumcised have trouble uh, latching on and breastfeeding. This is all proven. So are you looking away from him like he's the insane one? Are you walking away with a weird expression like he's the nutter? Fucking really! It has proven effects, on uh, psychological effects. Uh, you're a medical student, you should know how to research this stuff. I know how to research it. So research it. Yeah, research this stuff since you're a medical student and you should know how to do that. Okay, it's the end. Fuck me. Fuck me and unfuck me and fuck me out of me. Faith in humanity at all time low now. So I never say this, folks, but... You know, because defooing is never a good idea. But if you have friends like this, why the fuck are they your friends? Think of the people you've unfriended over the years. What did they say? What beliefs? And attitudes to those beliefs could they possibly have expressed to make you unfriend them that were worse than this shit? Maybe they were overtly racist or radically sectarian, but seriously, was any of it worse than I want babies mutilated, brain flush, I want babies mutilated, brain flush, I want babies genitals mutilated, and I don't care me how many of them have to die, brain flush, repeat ad infinitum. Is there even a worse thing that a human being can say? Is there a more disturbing mental sickness than that? Because I honestly cannot fucking think of it. And the most terrifying thing of all is you probably do have friends like this. You might even have close friends like this. Not just people who are in favour of mutilating babies, but people who will selectively collapse every part of their brain for the sake of continuing to believe in the unquestionable righteousness of mutilating babies. You know, some people will collapse their brains for the sake of continuing to believe in feminism. Some people collapse their brains for the sake of continuing to believe in sand feminism. But honestly, they are to be treasured when compared with people who will do it for the sake of the practice of torturing, mutilating and frequently killing babies. Goodbye. And don't kill yourself. Seriously, I've reserved it. <laughs> you don't get to kill yourself until I do. I have decreed it. I need you guys here, so I don't kill myself. Chew on that piece of paradox until I next return. These are the world's darkest times, folks. The very darkest. Return with the torch, and we shall navigate them. El Biento. Didi Makashi. Stonsha. Happy Halloween. What shall I leave you with? Oh, I know. On male circumcision, We've supported more than 400,000 procedures since last December alone.